BioBalance HealthCast episode 241, Characteristics of People with Type O Blood. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week we're continuing our conversation about blood types. Blood cells are in the news and they're really interesting and there's so much more information that they help generate and provide for us than I ever realized. There there was just an article uh, shot across the internet this last week about a new blood test that can identify every virus you've ever had, specifically individually you, in your life history, whatever virus you may have had. And they're excited about it because in the aggregate, when tens of thousands of people have taken this blood test and they have all the accumulated data, they can start to look at that as a marker point, a biomarker, which is part of what we've been talking about in several of our most recent podcasts, to identify viral trends by region, by population, by sex, by racial characteristics, whatever, which goes back to the whole genome, uh, genotyping thing. Right. It, I mean, science is real, science, not medicine, science. is really moving in the direction of learning more and more in the aggregate that we can then use as markers to apply to an individual and say, are you susceptible to this? Do you have this? Or are you safe from having that? And So what they have, they you have an offering you can always get all of your genes tested which Mm -hmm. is very very expensive Mm -hmm. and every day a few more genes are found out that do different things so they have to keep updating it they would probably do that on the internet i don't Mm -hmm. know but or you can go all the way to the other side and do a four dollar test and find out about your blood type which would then tell you a lot and we've discussed this right. a lot about diseases that you are susceptible to genetically. And you can order the blood test kit from Amazon. Right? Yeah. And they deliver it to it's, your house. It's like you take it yourself, it tells you in two minutes' time what your blood type is if you don't already know your blood type. Right. And then there's a book, uh, there are a couple of books by Dr. Peter J. Dadamo who, uh, that, that talk about blood types and issues around blood types, diet. Best recommended diet for mm-hmm. type O, type A, type A. And things you should never eat, and things, and things but which is things very you're susceptible to. Yeah, it's usually the in, things in you the love. In the aggregate, right? So, so it's a genetic marker that's very. That, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's a genetic marker that's very inexpensive to find out. Yes. Or you could do your whole genome, and what Brett's talking about with the white cells, we're looking at red cells, mm-hmm. the white cells have a memory, which no one really thought about. But if you if you consider the fact that when we have a virus, usually chicken pox, we get it once. Mm-hmm. Now, why do we get it once? We get it once because our white cells remember that we had it and don't okay. allow us to, to get that again as long as we have, we have an intact uh, immune system. So how does that relate to shingles? Because old shingles, people are always advised right? to get inoculated against shingles. Okay, so um, as we get past seventy, mm-hmm. uh, with a lat, we we lose our testosterone. Of course, by seventy, we have very low level, and our growth hormone goes down by a lot. Those are two hormones that stimulated our immune system mm-hmm. and made our immune system reactive. So what happens is, when we don't have those hormones, our white cells lose their memory. And we get shingles like from when the your cell phone pops. starts getting a low battery charge, <laughs> and you start dropping apps and phone calls. Yeah, because you don't have the strength to carry them anymore. Right, it just them off. I didn't know they did that when they lost their battery. I guess you've had an experience with that, but but <laughs> yes. yeah, that's what it's like. They they lose their memory, so then you can't. You are susceptible to, th- to okay. things like that again. Yes, but why up until until seventy and healthy people, we usually have an intact immune system. That's why some immu- immunization don't work after, after 70. 70 now getting back unless to, you've been replacing your hormones right and they and and stem cells if you replace your testosterone in both sexes if you stimulate your growth your growth hormone or some people take growth hormone um, then those two things keep your immune system going we know that because when we look at our own 
stem cells. Mm -hmm. If someone's going in for a stem cell, autologous stem cell, they take stem cells out of your, um, out of the hip, mm -hmm. okay, the bone marrow, and they take stem cells out, they activate them, and then they put them into your joints or somewhere right. to, to um, help you rebuild cartilage. Well, when they do that, if you're over 70, they tend to not take you because they know that your stem cells aren't going to work. They're not going to be charged. They're not, they're not like enough the stem cells. Yeah. There aren't enough and they're not as active. And so once you're past 70 without hormones, without testosterone, then your stem cells aren't going to be reactivated and they can't use them. So what happens with the stem cell you guys? An artificial knee? The stem cell guys in town is they send patients to us six months before they're going to do a stem cell uh, harvest and put it into a joint. And they say, could you please start this patient on testosterone because we need to get the stem cells going. So that's, that's my best evidence besides all the articles that I read and I could quote all of those to you, but this is the best example of how testosterone stimulates stem cells well, and, it's, and keeps your it's immune system going. examples of doctors talking to doctors about what they know best mm -hmm. and finding ways to treat that isn't necessarily in the protocol that we're trained in school. You were talking There's no protocol for this in, in yeah. how either doctor, I mean, that's a group of doctors, that group or me were you, trained. And you were talking in a previous podcast about uh, giving somebody vitamin K or using something called Kellogg before they Kenalog. Have, Kenalog mm -hmm. before they have surgery to reduce bleeding. No, um, excuse me, not Kenalog. I, I I use vitamin K before they vitamin have surgery. Vitamin K. That's and, it. Uh, and that's not anything I ever heard of until I started talking to you. And, mm -hmm. and I've talked to a couple other doctors who didn't know that. Well, that's that actually was something that I found out myself. Yeah. And the re you always go back to physiology. If you're a really curious doctor and something happens or somebody has a problem and you don't know exactly why that problem happened, and then you go back to the physiology of it. You both research the research out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and you go back to the physiology of why this could possibly happen. <laughs> so I found research that said that women are usually low on vitamin K. Vitamin K is necessary for clotting blood. I used to do surgery week several times a week and i would find that in big cases that lasted more than 20 minutes patients would start my my patients were all women they would start bleeding halfway through the case from everywhere just mm -hmm. oozing mm -hmm. well that's very hard to stop oozing is you can't there's no place to stop it right. so so what i did was i went back and found the the critical thing that i could replace was vitamin K so i tried that first Mm -hmm. And I replaced it, and all of a sudden, I got the Mercy Award from St. John's Mercy yeah. for the lowest blood loss. Wow. Which is, to me, amazing. Then I shared that with other doctors, and they went, Ugh. I mean, it's like a $3 treatment. <laughs> it is the cheapest treatment. They didn't want to think about it, and oh, that's my college of whatever, OBGYN, surgery or whatever, doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. Well... It's just a vitamin. <laughs> it's a vitamin we need more of, but we don't eat the right foods. So oftentimes we are low on it. So our, our blood used it up, and that's why they didn't bleed at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But they bled at the end. And it wasn't people with weird clotting, because I did all that. I studied all that. I checked all their clotting profile. They didn't have any unusual clotting problems or genetic clotting problems. So in any case, this is how I look at things. I look at them from the research and I didn't find research on it. Mm -hmm. And then I look at it from the physiology and then if it's not going to hurt anything, then I add that and mm -hmm. we had low blood loss. People get better when they don't have much blood loss at a, in a surgical case. Well, They're out of the hospital really fast. Absolutely. It costs less money because you don't have to buy blood. Right. That's why they well, gave me an award because I saved the money. Yeah. So <laughs> that brings us full circle back to our conversation about biomarkers and blood cells and blood tests. Let's talk about the old blood type, which is the most, the original blood type. Mm -hmm. And O negative is what's called the universal donor. And you can explain as you were what that okay. means. Okay. So, so. And we can go from there. Okay. So, O blood type is like the other blood types, it's in the same locus as many other things that run our metabolism, run our immune system, uh, and require certain types of diets. So, that's on one area on our gene, on our chromosomes, and then the Rh negative positive is on an entirely different area. Okay. So the so negative... So you have O positive, O negative. So you have O as one genetic 
um, I guess, shuffling from your parents. You have one gene or two genes from them on that locus and then or on that two chromosomes. And then you have from your parents also a different shuffling of the positive and the mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. So you, if you have one positive, then you're positive. You have to have Are two. Are you sure? If you're two <laughs> negatives, positive. two negatives. I'm negative. Anyway, no, I'm not. But if you have two negatives, that's what makes you negative. Right. So in any case, O negative is a universal donor because no, if I give it to a B or um, an AB, they don't attack those blood cells and break them down mm -hmm. because the O is like like a clean slate. There's no proteins on it that the other blood cells find foreign. Right. So you can give the O to so, other so people. So if I'm an A... I have proteins on my red blood cells that identify blood cells or things that come into my body that are acceptable to an A and mm -hmm. things that are like call the police. You know, yeah. there's an invader. <laughs> and if you were to give me B blood, then, then it would go crazy. Then saying, your body attack, attack, would attack. break down the B blood right. and you would have a transfusion reaction where all of this, it, it's a terrible thing. Yes. Transfusion reactions are horrible. That's why we're so careful about transfusions in the hospital. Right. So you don't ever want to get the wrong blood. Yes. But in the OR, we or in excuse me, in the ER, we always keep O negative blood because anybody can take that. Okay. So there's no antigens that or proteins that another blood type would fight. Okay. So now we're talking about O's, and they used. I mean, the whole world was O to begin with, and then we mutated. <laughs> and and O's. If you think of an O, you think of like a hunter gatherer somebody i always think my friends who have oh are all marathoners and they always want me Stamina, to come out and endurance. they have endurance and they want me to go bicycling for 30 miles and i'm like oh, i'm a two mile bicycler i mean because i i mean i <laughs> have a whole, your benefit after two yeah, miles after two yeah. two miles I don't get it. Yeah, it, it goes downhill from there, by right. the way. Right. <laughs> so I, well, maybe not two, five, but whatever. But you hit a limit. I hit a limit, and they don't. So they're the stamina. They had to run after food. They had to mm -hmm. go days without eating. They can do that. Right. They can go without eating for a long period of time. Uh, and so they're, that's kind of the personality, the leader, the asserter, the... the um, extrovert. Mm -hmm. So there's a personality type that goes along with this, believe it or not, and not because it's O blood, but because it's on that same gene. It's on that same locus, what they call the area of the of the chromosome. And I don't remember if it was your conversation or the book that we read it in, but you said that type A and type B blood types are more uh, impacted negatively impacted by cancer and viruses than type O blood types. Not, now, that, type, not that an O can't have right. those things. Type but, A is more com is more commonly attacked by cancers mm -hmm. and by bacteria mm -hmm. because cancer and bacteria both have a, a protein that looks like A. Yes. And so, so the body says come on in. Yeah, yeah. So the body doesn't Doors fight, open. doesn't always fight it. Yeah. I mean that does, isn't universal, but right. it's common, more common in A's and in B and in B's like me. So we have A B. We don't have C. Mm -hmm. So we have. So I'm. So I have a problem with viruses supposedly. Mm -hmm. So my body looks at viruses and it has a B antigen or a B protein, and it says, Ah, come on in. And it's hard to get rid of them for, for okay. bees. Okay, and brings us back to the point to remind that we're talking about aggregate statistical numbers. We're not talking about individual risk. That's where some of these tests and some conversations with your doctor and looking at your own medical history can give you an edge. Mm -hmm. But there are some global things that we know about typos. Mm -hmm. and in regard to that, there are some global diet suggestions that may improve your immunity, your avoidance of certain infections mm -hmm. or illnesses, uh, or that if you don't follow them can increase the risk that you're going to have something bad happen to you. Right. And, and so we always want to make sure that we say, we're talking about statistical aggregates. On the whole, the data suggests of this huge population of those, these are general criteria. But for you as an O, they may not uh, be applicable. So, so Dr. Dadamo suggests, mm -hmm. or gives the reason behind it, and we don't have time to do that, but the reason behind 
owes having a higher rate of heart disease, mm-hmm. a higher rate of diabetes if they don't follow the diet. Right. Okay. Um, a higher rate of inflammation, like uh, let's see, he gave the um, he gave the uh, Crohn's disease, autoimmune disease, high rate of autoimmune disorders. Right. So. These illnesses cluster more they, in the type O population. Right. Not not doesn't mean that everybody has those diseases right. is a type O. It just means that it's much more common in type O. Okay. And then uh, also people who had type O had high triglycerides often if they didn't exercise actively. So so if you want to be a healthy type O, the bottom line is you have to exercise aerobically every day. That's yeah. that's your answer. Not aerobically the answer, means you get your heart beat up for twenty minutes or longer. Or longer. Yeah. Every day. Because that's gonna keep you from getting these diseases, mm-hmm. the diabetes, the heart disease, the autoimmune disease, it's gonna keep you going. But the additional part is you have to eat a certain diet. Well, yeah, it's gonna keep you from getting these diseases if you also eat properly. Right. I mean you I mean can, you can't you can eat eat Mars bars day. all day. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to work. So, I mean, whatever. Do they still <laughs> not make the recommended diet. Do they still make diabetes? Mars bars. Yeah. So, um, they're, they, al- they also mentioned one other thing that, that O's have, because of a neurotransmitter that they have a problem with, they have a lot more depression, bipolar disease, mm-hmm. um, and schizophrenia. And, you know, when I was actively treating patients, that was not information that I had. It never occurred to me to ask when somebody came in and complained about depression, mm-hmm. uh, suicidality, whatever. Mm-hmm. What blood type are you? Well, because and not because it's not individually relevant. And not anybody, for, nobody in the medical field. This is like we've Dr. Dadamo's way ahead of his time. Yeah, we were starting to say that. Yeah, is that science and research and all the things we know by mm-hmm. reading and doing. Mm-hmm are way ahead of what mainstream medicine is. They're very slow, especially when you get to a point where medicine's gonna change drastically. This advent of genetics is gonna change everything. Right. And so we're at the edge of a cliff. For most doctors, that's retraining and relearning, and that's scary, and so they're like, no, we're not doing that. We're not thinking, we're not gonna, la, 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 you know? Right, So they have a problem like anybody would when this new information comes to them and they know they're going to have to change everything they do. Yeah. So we're at that landmark time. Turning point. And some of us have jumped over. Well, and we're really and lucky had a to be in St. Louis because Washington <laughs> University has the biggest database of complete genotypes in the world. That's right. And they're really accumulating more and more and more. And, and again, the, the advantage of having that information when you have a massive database is you can run statistical analyses and mm-hmm. you can find out when this age group of this racial group of this religious group living in Tennessee, you know, what are they likely to encounter? Well, they, Dr. Dadamo has a large group of yes. genetic genetic from testing his research from his, his research. Right. As long as they would put that together with Washu, yeah. that would help us. Yeah. But um, so let's get to the diet. Yeah, let's talk because about that's the really what Dr. Dadamo wants to talk about. It's interesting. My my husband's an A, I'm a B, my daughter's an O. There's not much we could all eat. <laughs> I mean, if you sit down at dinner, it's going to be like short order cooking to make us all eat. Right. And we we don't even exercise the same. Right. It's I can't teach my daughter what I do because what I do isn't going to work for her because right. she's an O. And, and that's kind of played out. Yeah. So, Which um, you didn't know. You saw it playing out and you fought it. Uh, or you just never. I didn't know what the. It. I didn't know what the real key issue was yeah. with the diet of why. I mean, we were eating lean meat, vegetables, salad, and maybe a starch, and we were eating the wrong meats. Right. So for so an. Let's talk about. Yeah. That. So right. for an O. Um, beneficial foods are, if you're an O, you shouldn't be a vegan. I swear you shouldn't be a vegan because vegans have lots of carbohydrates in their diet. Right. And carbohydrates, especially wheat, corn, uh, rice, are not good for O's because there were not, O's started when there were no farmers. It was hunting and gathering. So think of like killing the zebra or the whatever they ate i don't know what they ate anyway whatever i'm sorry I, i'm roadkill i'm not an anthropologist i'm i'm just a mere physician so uh, but they are meat eaters so beef lamb liver veal venison all of those things are great for o's when o's eat those and they get the essential 
nutrients that they need and they don't get something that's going to cause them to be ill. Right. So those are really good. You notice that if O's become vegans, they gain tons of weight. If if oh, you are if A's are vegans, because that's great for them, right. then they lose a lot of weight. Yeah. So when they say, oh, ve you know, vegan or vegetarianism is wonderful for everyone, yeah. there's just like anything else, there's a diet for everybody. Okay. So, so in this case, beneficial foods would be uh, seaweed, like seaweed salad. Mm -hmm. So they need iodine and kelp. So those of us who live in the Midwest, Especially if you live in the Midwest, yeah, we're, we're totally we're sink. totally messed yeah. up because we live in the Midwest. They can eat almost they can eat every seafood. Right. They can eat eggs. Eggs are good for them. They can eat nuts. Just think of hunting and gathering. Well, they can eat some nuts. They they recommend yes. like you stay away from cashew nuts and that's true. Uh, but the flaxseed, walnut, pumpkin seed are all good to those eat, are all and good. you can mix those in a lot of things that you cook, like flaxseed, mm -hmm. where you don't specifically even taste. I watched flaxseed grown at um, in Washington D.C. They really? had like a sample old fashioned garden, and flaxseed flax was one of the things that they grew. Wow, and there was flax seed on it. I mean, I was like, pick it up, eat it. I mean, it's something that that is actually grown as a plant. I just had never thought about what it would look like. Huh. So the um, O's are the only people that can eat bananas that I know, that I look through all the types. That's good for their That's diet. really good for them. Yeah, they right. can eat them. But Other people can eat them, but in it a may not be way, good. not so yeah. much. Yeah. That's right. So they can have blueberries, cherries, plums. Tea is good. There's, there's, but then there's some things that they shouldn't eat. Okay. And to put it in categories, O's are not, a, they're not good at eating dairy. Yeah. And that doesn't mean they're lactose intolerant. It means that, that yeah. dairy causes them to slow their metabolism and gain weight. So dairy is not good for O's. Um, they shouldn't eat wheat, corn, barley. We talked about that. Gluten or popcorn. Everybody thinks popcorn is great for everybody as a diet, but it's really not. I wonder how the... Uh distribution of type O's in our community correlates with the distribution of those who have to have gluten-free diets. I don't, I have not Because I know that's really that. grown. Although I I used to, I used to have the blood type of everybody I delivered because right. that's something you do is you do a blood type on everyone. Mm -hmm. But um, but I don't have that now. We're going to start ordering that on everybody Yeah. Uh, now who comes in. But so some of so the big no-nos are wheat germ, corn, kidney beans, navy beans, lentils of any kind, peanuts, and potatoes. Mm -hmm. And peanuts is another is yeah. a nut. So yeah, it's a nut. Again, you yeah. be careful about nuts. <laughs> so so yeah yeah. So um, that's so if you're an O, you probably should read his book. Mm -hmm. But also, um, there are things that are, you should avoid. And then there are things that you should not eat. And that that's like things that will really make you susceptible to the illnesses of O's. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the exercise is key for them. So um, if you know the blood, the blood type of your friends, you can right. kind of figure it out by how they exercise or if they exercise. Mm -hmm. So uh, Or if they love to exercise or if they don't. So I'd much rather do something creative. Or learn something. So, but I still exercise because I it I have to because otherwise I wouldn't. Well, be healthy. there are other elements in life that you have to balance. Blood mm -hmm. type information or blood marker information is just one piece that you factor mm -hmm. into creating a healthy lifestyle for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so find out your blood type and see if this is useful information to you. And as always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.